first graders, hi! Welcome back to Phonics. This is Saxon Lesson 105. It's actually a test, and a test is meant to be able to show your teacher what you know or what you don't know. And I decided I wanna do it with you anyway, even though you're not in school right now, because I think it's a great chance to review the things that you've already learned. And if you wanna turn it into your teacher, you can do that. You can still turn it into your teacher, or if you wanna just keep it at home to show your mom or your dad or your grandma or somebody in your house what you know, you can do that too. But we're going to start with our giant review deck. This is where we say all the letter cards that we've done this whole year, the ones that we don't do every day that we only do once a week on assessment days. So we're doing those today. Oh, and I hope you don't cry. I hope, I hope you get through these. There's a lot. Are you ready? Let's see what you remember. Starting on digraph, TH. Ready? Digraph, TH. Digraph, NG. Digraph, EE. -E, U, W. A consonant E, O consonant E, U consonant E, I consonant E, E consonant E, X, Y, digraph S H, digraph O O, J, V, final syllable B L E. And I should pause here because sometimes kids ask me, Miss Smith. Why do you just say final syllable B-L-E? Aren't you supposed to say final stable syllable B-L-E? Well, the reason we call it a stable syllable is because it doesn't move from the end of the word. It always comes at the end of the word. But I already know that because it's called a final syllable and final means at the end. So I like to just make it a little bit shorter and say final syllable B-L-E. Can we do it together? Ready? Final syllable B-L-E. Final syllable F L E. Final syllable P L E. Final syllable D L E. Final syllable T L E. Final syllable G L E. A P N O T Z I L S D F H G R K, C, V, M, E, digraph C, K, digraph T, H. Nice job. Oh, that was a lot. Okay, now let's do the same thing for our picture cards. Oh, wow. Look at all these picture cards. Are you freaking out? Let's see how many of them you remember, starting ring, ng. Ready? Ring, ng, thimble, feather, v, sheep, e, umbrella, a, unicorn, u, wagon, v, cake, a, hose, o, cube, u, dime, i, concrete, e, fox, x, yarn, e, shark, sh, hook, u, tooth, u, jar, j, vest, v, Bubble, bull, ruffle, full, staple, pull, candle, dull, bottle, toll, bugle, goal, lion, ol, octopus, ah, overalls, o, cat, k, duck, k, nest, n, inch, i, icicle, i, pig, p, tent, t, apple, a, acorn, a, Zebra, z, whoopsies. Sun, s, rose, z, dog, d, fish, f, hat, h, goat, g, rabbit, r, kite, k, balloon, m, monkey, m, elephant, e, eh, equal, e, ring, n. Ay, 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 that was so many words. Good work. All right, and now of course you know my favorite part are always the suffixes because they make more than one sound sometimes. We just start with me on suffix ing, ready? Suffix ing, suffix t, d, ed, suffix es, suffix s, z, suffix les, suffix ness, 
suffix li, suffix e, suffix ing. Nice job. Okay. Now that we got through all of our letter cards and our picture cards, our suffix cards, we're ready to start the review. Here's how this works. I have a whiteboard, and I'm hoping that you have either a whiteboard or a piece of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a word, you're going to spell it, and I'm going to spell it, and then we're going to check and see who got it right. If I got it right, I will mark a little letter, well, let me say it this way. I'll mark a little point under letter T for teacher. If you get it right, you can mark a point on your board under letter S for student. So sometimes we might both get it right, which would mean we both get a point, but whoever has the most points at the end wins the game. And of course, if you don't get it right, I think you know you don't get a point, right? You can fix it, but you wouldn't get a point. Okay, I'm warning you right now. I'm actually really good at this game. So I hope you're not too scared. And then I should show you. I have the words written in my book so I can check who got it right. So I'll tell you the word, then we'll both spell it, and then we'll check it and see who's right. Ready? Okay. First word, get your chopper out, because it has a root word and a suffix. Tell me the root word and suffix in started. Root word suffix started is start ed. Root word start. Add your suffix, make it say start ed, start ed. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you, the words have to be coded correctly in order to get the point. So you have to have it spelled and coded. Okay, let's check it. Let's see how you did. Started, I'm checking my book, should be spelled S-T-A-R-T -T with a suffix E-D. So you should have arced combination AR and boxed suffix ED says ed, star ted. How'd you do? Okay, I know I got it right, so I'm gonna mark a point. And if you got it right, you can mark a point where you're keeping score. And when I say erase, erase, you can either erase your board or just move to the next place on your paper if you're doing it on paper. Erase, erase. Next word, ooh, has two syllables. So will you get your clappers ready? Clap with me the word farmer. Ready? Far, mer. First syllable, far. Far, mer. Remember it has to be coded. Okay, let's check it. Farmer should be spelled F-A-R-M-E-R. -E combination A-R, combination E-R says er at the end of a word. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You know what I just realized I forgot? I forgot to find the vowel pattern because don't you see A is a vowel, E is a vowel? Consonant, consonant, split the syllables. Oh man, if it's a two syllable word, it should have a vowel pattern. Dang it. So guess what? Teacher doesn't get the point this time, but if you remembered the vowel pattern and you spelled it correctly and coded it correctly, you can add a point for yourself. Erase, erase. Dang it. Okay, next one. Let's take a break from combination AR and see if you remember the diphthong that says ow, ow, ow. Spell the word how. What word? How. Code it. Okay, let's check it. How'd you do? How should be spelled H O W. Arc diphthong. O W says ow at the end of a word. I got it right, so I get a point. 
And if you got it right, you could mark a point for you too. So you would keep track of both of our points. Teacher has two and however many you have. Okay, next word. Uh, let's do another out word. Spell for me the word sprout. What word? Sprout. Think about what says ow, ow, ow in the middle of a word. Sprout. Where's my sign? Sprout, ow, ow. Where does the sprout go? Okay. Ready? Let's check it. Sprout should be spelled S P R O U T. We use O U to say ow in the middle of a word. Dang it. Hmm, I don't know if you noticed this, but I got OU says ow in the middle of the word. I forgot to code it. Of course, we always arc diphthong OU says ow. Dang it. Okay, so teacher doesn't get a point this time. Did you remember to arc it? Do you get a point? Let's go to our next word, erase, erase. Uh, next word. Tell me the root word and suffix in roping. Root word suffix roping is rope ing. Root word is rope. Add your suffix rope ing. Rope ing. And remember, it has to be coded to get the point. Wait, why am I helping you? I shouldn't be helping you, I wanna win. Rope, ing. Okay, time's up, check it. Roping should be spelled R-O-P-E suffix I-N-G. -E. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think something's wrong here. Oh man, I forgot about our dropping rule. Do you remember our dropping rule that we learned a while ago says, if an E comes in front of a vowel suffix, you drop it, you drop it. Which means I should have dropped that E right out of the word. I should have said, nope, there is no E in that word. It used to be there, but it's not anymore. R-O-P-I-N-G. Man, I am not doing very well. Okay, teacher doesn't get a point, but if you got that right, you can put a point for you. If not, fix it. Erase, erase. Next word, spell for me the word make. What word? Make. M-A-A-K-E. Remember, you can look at our sign over here if you need to remember which letter says K at the end of make. M-A-A, after a long vowel, you make. Okay, let's check it, how'd you do? Make should be spelled M-A-K-E. A consonant E, make wrong cross out. Did you get it? <gasps> I did. So I will put a point for teacher. Erase, erase. Next word, ooh, let's do one that's trickier. Choppers out, tell me the root word and suffix in making. Root word suffix making is make, ing. Root word is make. Oh, I just did that. Add your suffix, make, ing. Okay, let's check it. You ready? You ready to see how good I did? Making, root word make, should be spelled M-A-K-E with a suffix I-N-G. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Dang it. Did I just make the same mistake? Dropping rule, if an E comes in front of a vowel suffix, and ing is a vowel suffix because it starts with a vowel, you drop it, you drop it. 
Dang it. Oh, I forgot it. I forgot to drop it again. Making should be just spelled M-A-K-I-N-G. Man, I am not doing very well. Okay, fine. Teacher doesn't get a point. But did you get it right? If not, fix it. If you did, I guess you can have a point. Erase, erase. Next word, ooh, this is super tricky. <laughs> Next word, choppers out. Tell me the root word and suffix in hiked. Root word suffix hiked is hiked. Root word is hike. Start root word, hike. I, I, I. Add your suffix, make it say hiked. Hiked. What suffix is t t t? No. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, that was close. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this point. Ready? Hiked should be spelled H-I-K suffix E-D. Okay, guess what I almost did? I almost left the letter E here in the root word hike, and then I remembered, oh, wait, wait, wait. If an E comes in front of a vowel suffix, you drop it, you drop it. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And it's just H-I-K-E-D, but I still have a make on on the I, and box my suffix E-D says T which means teacher gets a point. Yes. Whew, I'm doing good. Well, not as good as I wanted to, but it's okay. Okay, round two, this is the last round before we take our test, is you split your board into two pieces, two parts, and then I want you to write diphthong, O-U says ow, at the top of this side, Write diphthong O W says ow at the top of this side. And all I want you to do is draw for me a quick picture. Which picture reminds us O U says ow? Which picture reminds us O W says ow at the end of a word? And I'll give you a clue, they're both animals. One's kind of little, one's a little bigger. What are the pictures that go with diphthong O U says ow, O W says ow? 30 seconds to draw it, go. When is it for O.W. says ow, 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 ow. Oh yeah, the big one is moon. Okay, time's up, are you ready? O-U says ow should be a picture of a little mouse, because we say mouse ow. Will you do it? Mouse ow. And of course for O-W says ow, it should be a picture of a cow. Cow ow. Will you do it? Cow ow. Yes. So tell you what, if you got both of those, you can have two points. If you only got one of them, you could have one point. And of course, if you didn't get them, then you should be fixing them. I got both of them, so I'm going to say one, two, which means teacher got six points. I don't know how many points you got, but I hope it was smaller than six so that I could be the winner. And if you're the winner, ugh, no fair beating the teacher, man. All right, you ready? We're gonna come to our worksheet, and here's what's going to happen. The worksheet has on it a bunch of blank lines where you're going to be asked to spell some words. Guess what? This time I'm not going to spell them with you because it's an assessment. It's a test. It means the teacher wants to know what you know or maybe your parents want to know what you know. So I'll tell you the words but I'm not going to spell them up here and let you check them with me. I'll have you just either show it to your mom or show it to your dad or your grandma or your teacher and they can check it to see if you got it right, okay? You probably won't get points for it, but it's still just good practice. 
Okay, so here we go with our worksheet by number one. Clappers up, because it's two syllables. I want you to clap with me the word partner. Ready? Partner. First syllable, part. Add your next syllable, partner. Partner. Okay, come down to number two. Number two, spell for me the word shout. What word? Shout. Shout. Okay, number three, spell for me the word now. What word? Now. Okay, number four, choppers out. Tell me the root word and suffix in hoping. Root word suffix hoping is hope ing. Root word is hope. Add your suffix, make it say hope ing. Hope ing. Okay, number five, super tricky, choppers out. Tell me the root word and suffix in liked. Root word suffix liked is liked. Root word is like. Starting root word, like. Add your suffix, which suffix says liked, liked. Okay, number six and seven, will you match those letters, those diphthongs to their pictures? And then come up to the top by number eight. Will you code number eight to show the word owl? How do we code it to show owl? And of course, I'm not gonna put it up here to show you and your parents probably won't know if you get it right or not. So. This part you'll only be concerned about if you're turning it into your teacher and your teacher wants to see how you did with coding, okay? Number nine, code it to show cow boy, cowboy. Number 10, code it to show light house, lighthouse. Think about if there's two words, what do you do? Light, house. Number 11, code it to show the word mouth. Mouth. And number 12, code it to show bird, house, bird house. What do you do if there's two words, bird, house? Okay. 13 through 17, those are sight words that you can read to somebody if they want you to. Turn it over to the back. 18 and 19, guess what? You can't really do those either because that's where the teacher is just supposed to ask you, hey, what's that called? And you would say, diphthong OU. And your teacher would say, what does it say? And you would say, ow, ow, ow. What's that called? Diphthong OW. What does it say? Ow, ow, ow. Okay, you can't really do that part though. So I just want you to come down here. I'm going to read this story to you and then I'm gonna ask you to read it, okay? By yourself, so my turn first. You're just gonna listen this time. It says, last week my cat Libby had three kittens. One is black with tan feet and is a boy. The two girls have stripes. The tiny kittens snuggle up to Libby. They drink lots of milk and are getting fat. I can't wait until we can play together. After they reach six weeks, they will go to homes with people who will love them and take good care of them. Okay, here's how this works. I just read it so you could have an idea what it was talking about. You're going to read it by yourself now until I say stop. If you finish early, start back over and try to read it again. Okay, so you're reading this until I say stop. Ready, read.
a stop. You might have read it more than once. You might not have finished. That's okay. But we're going to come to number 20. And I'll read you the question. It says, what is my cat's name? If you need to look back up here in the story to find the cat's name, you can do that. If you remember, will you write it on the line? Find what is the cat's name. Write it. Okay, number 21 says, how many kittens did Libby have? Was it one, two, three? Will you bubble in next to which one it was? Fill in the bubble, one, two, or three kittens. How many did she have? And then the last question says, where will they go? To snuggle with Libby, to the barn, to good homes. Will you fill in, where will they go? And guess what? That's the end of the assessment. So you can either show someone at home how you did or you can turn it into your teacher even though she probably won't give you points for it. That's okay, it's just to see what you know. Okay, have a great day, bye.